Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the series of cloud formation for webinars. So in today's tutorial, we are going to uh, create a security group by using cloud formation template. So if you are new to this uh, channel, please make sure to like, share and subscribe the content if you like it. So let's go ahead and see what are the prerequisites. So the first prerequisite would be, uh, we have to add a Visual Studio Code cloud formation extension. <coughs> so, why we are adding this cloud formation extension? This uh, because the template code that is a YAML template code that we are going to write in Visual Studio. For that, we would be using the uh, uh, capability of this cloud formation extension. So that would be our first prerequisite. So as we have discussed the prerequisites, let's go ahead and see what all resources and parameters we would be using as part of part of this template that we are going to create. So guys, as you can see. The components that we have, which we are going to create is, we will create one resource, which, which would be the instance security group. So we will keep the name as instance security group and we will put one output and that output would be the security group ID. So let's jump to the Visual Studio code and see how we can uh, develop and uh, deploy the cloud formation template for the specific security group. So let's go ahead and create a new YAML file. Security group. So the, as you can see in the component list, we are just going to use resources and output. So I will try to start enter. So it's only resources and output. So we need to remove all this. Okay. So as we have removed it, so as a best practice, we should always remember that we give a proper description to the specific template. So going forward, if anyone is going to use it, it would be easy for that specific person to understand what exactly this template is waiting for. So let me go ahead and put in the description. So guys, I have put the description. So over here, what we're going to do is we are going to enable the uh, SSH access and the HTTP access on the inbound port of the security group. So let me go ahead, double space, security. So this is the security group. So guys, as you can see, we have the security group field over here. So let's check the properties for a specific resource. Let's jump to our console and the Google console. Over here, I will just type this. Let me open this documentation and let me search it. Required, yes. So, guys, if you see, only one property is compulsory that is a group description. So, let's go back to one board. So over here, this group description is compulsory, as mentioned over here. Now, let's do one thing first. Let's give the group name as on traffic access. And we will give the group description as this group will allow all HTTP and SSH traffic. Now, once we have done this, what we are going to do is, so these are the two, uh, this, this is the only one which is being required. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just go ahead and over here I will write security group ingress. So guys, I have not given the property yet. Let me remove this. So what we have to do is we are going to use the specific property which is security group ingress. So what is security group ingress? It is the inbound rules associated with security group and it there is a short interpretation during which you cannot connect to the security group. Okay, it's not a required parameter, but you can use this. So if you see in the example, this is how we have to mention it. This is security group ingress and this is security group ingress. So for now, we are just going to use security group ingress. So for this, what I will do, I will jump back to the console. And over here we will mention the property that would be security group ingress. Okay, I will just copy that property. Property is copied. Let me go over here. Mention the property over here. And over here, I will just mention the list. And from here, okay. So there would be an indentation required over here. 
So this would be the uh, security group in this. So as I said, we will allow for SS traffic. So let's start with SS traffic. It will be TCP. So that is one ingress that we have mentioned. Now we will mention another ingress. So I will just copy back the same code over here, paste it. So this will be the second one. So over here I will just mention AT and I will just mention AT. So guys, if you want to enable the, the HTTPS over here, then instead of using AT, AT, you can use uh, 443 and 443. So guys, this is for security group ingress. So in this example, we are going to take for security group ingress, but as we can see in the documentation, you can also mention ingress as well as egress. So if you want to apply rules for your security group uh, egress, there also you can apply the rules as shown in the documentation. So for our example, this is what we were looking for, which has been completed successfully. Now, let's go ahead and move to output. So in output, we are going to just use the Instant security group that we have created. So I will just mention the name instant security group and over here I will just mention the outputs. So this will be the output where we are using the instant security group. I will save it. So our template build is completed successfully. Now let's go ahead and see. If you can see there is one resource that we have created which is instant security group and there is one output. Now let's go ahead and move to the next part. Now we are going to launch our template. So as part of this launch template, first we will validate the template that we have created. Second, we will create the stack out of this template. And third, we will use a describe uh, stack command to see whether the stack has been created successfully or not by using the AWS CLI commands. So guys, let's jump to our git bash to run the commands. So over here, I will use the validate command. So this is the first command that we are using. So the validate command is used to validate the template that we have created. So in case of any errors, it will give you the output of that specific error. So in our case, the file name would be security group. I will hit enter. And guys, as you can see, the output has been created. That means the template is correct. So I will just go ahead and run another command that is create stack. So in create stack I will give just SG that is security group <coughs> and over here I will give this name of the file. Okay. Yes. So let's run it. So guys as you can see the stack ID is created successfully. Now we will use the same command. I will just remove this. And instead of create stack, I will use describe and it will be stacks S at the end. So let's go ahead and hit on enter. So guys, it will show you, it will describe the stack that you have created. So this is a stack ID, the stack name, and this is the description that we have provided. This creation time, deletion time, and the other configuration. So as you're getting the output in a stack, a described stacks, that means your stack is created successfully. Now, let me do one thing, let me clear the screen. So our launch template using AWS CLI is complete. Now let's move towards the next part, that is uh, verification of the stack that we have created by using AWS Management Console. So I will jump to my AWS Management Console over here. In that, I will go to Cloud Formation. And guys, as you can see, okay, there is one issue. Let's see what's the issue. The value of property IP protocol 
must be of type string. So let's go ahead and see what the issue is. Okay. So guys, I will tell you what the issue is. So over here, there was option given and instead of using, we have to just use this TCP. We don't, we have to remove this brackets. So I have removed this bracket. Okay. Now I will save my code. And after saving my code, what I will do? I will go over here and I will just delete this stack. So let's wait for the stack to be deleted. So delete is successful and you can see there is no stack right now. So let's jump back to our git bash over here. I will run the same command once again. Create stack. So now as the stack is created, let's check over here in the stacks and let's monitor the events. So I will just go to the events. Let's see now. So guys, as you can see, now it is created successfully. So the issue was that it, there was a bracket which was mentioned in the code. So sometimes a validated template fails to catch this small small errors that we have seen right now. Now, as we have uh, created the uh, security group, let's see the resources would be the uh, instance security group and in output, we have the output that we have created. That is a security group name. Now, what I'm going to do is, I will take you to AWS and over here, let's search for EC2 console and inside EC2 console, I will go to security groups and it's a security group and this is our security group name that is being mentioned already. So if I open the security group over here, you can see the involved rules that we have mentioned that is the SSH and the HTTP and we have not mentioned any outbound rule that is the reason it is as it is. This is uh, all traffic going out by default. So that's it for the session guys. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. But uh, before ending the video, there is one important thing I would like to tell you that guys that make sure that once you have cross verified your stack and your output is successful, make sure that you uh, clean the resources by deleting the stack. So you are not building for the resources which are as in your AWS management console account. So I will, what I will do, I will go back to AWS. I will go to Cloud Formation. And over here, I will just click on this and I will just click on delete. So this is how you can delete your stack. Let's wait for a few seconds. This will remove your stack. So the stack is deleted. I hope you like the session, guys. Have a great day, goodbye.